Hey friends, my name is George Gianaris and I'm a chef of 36 years and if you're here it's probably because you like to eat healthy, save money and cook like a pro. If you've ever gone out and purchased your own microgreens, especially organic ones, you know that they're really expensive. So today I'm going to show you how to make your own. It's really, really simple. I know there's a lot of videos on the internet about how to grow your own microgreens, but I've pieced together the best tips that I feel make this easy for you to do and I'm going to show you how I do it and it's very effective and I've never had problems making it. First, I'd like to say that this video is not sponsored, but I would like to give a shout out to True Leaf Market because they really have walked me through the process of growing my own microgreens, and they've been nothing but a positive resource for me. Um, when you do decide to grow your own microgreens, start off small, buy a small packet of seeds, even though it's much more expensive to buy it that way than in bulk, and pick something that's easy to grow. Talk to them, they're really effective and they, they really care about what you're trying to do. I'm going to be growing broccoli today, it's super delicious, and it's right now, it's, my kids are in college, it's just me and my wife, so I'm going to make one tray. And I purchased these little individual trays like this just because if I ever decide that I want to mix it up and I don't want to have to make a whole batch of the same type of seed, uh, I could do that and it'll be nicely separated. Does it really matter? Could you put seeds in different portions of the tray? Sure. But each seed has its own kind of growing process. For example, the broccoli likes to be in total darkness for two to three days and then what you do is you put a little weight on the seeds as they grow so that for the, uh, after three days so that when they get to the fifth day they have a little pressure on them. It almost like simulates the fact that the seed itself is under soil. Today we're going to be making microgreens using potting soil. Potting soil for me is the most effective way. You can use mats too. It just gets a little bit more costly. And the potting soil that I'm going to use today is a fine seedling soil organic. Um, you can purchase this online, but the shipping is unfortunately not very cost effective. I bought this from my local gardening center and I'm sure you could find it as well. What I like to do, and this is kind of a controversial thing, not a, uh, people say it's not necessary, people say it is necessary, people say it helps, people say it doesn't make a difference. What I do is I like to add some peroxide to the water that I use to water my uh, microgreens. The other thing that I do is I water from the bottom. So we start out by putting two cups of water in the bottom of our tray. I add one teaspoon per 500 milliliters of water. I do not use water that has chlorination in it. My tap water comes from a well. So this is a five liter su supply of water here. I'm going to add 10 teaspoons of peroxide to this. This is 3% peroxide, so it's really not a very strong dilution. And that's, there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon, so that's six, that's nine, and then I'm just gonna add one teaspoon. Now be aware that you, you really wanna be a little careful about the seeds that you do decide to start out with. The larger the seeds, some of them require sprouting. Whatever the seeds need, they will tell you how to do it on the website. For example, broccoli, this is a roughly a 10 by 20 tray, I think. They say for 10 by 20, it actually looks bigger than that. Let me measure it. Yes, this is 10 by 20. In a 10 by 20 tray, you are going to use one ounce of seed, a broccoli seed. So first thing what we wanna do is add our potting soil to these trays. And when you do, you wanna, stay about a quarter of an inch away from the top of it and just press it down a little bit. You don't want it to be re like really, really packed down, but you, you want it to not be terribly, terribly fluffy, it's sort of like that. And again, leave a quarter inch gap from the top. The reason why is when you do cut your microgreens, you can use either scissor or some kind of knife. You, you don't want to cut that soil off because you're not going to wash your microgreens. I'm going to just pour my liquid in here now, my two cups of liquid. I'm going to add another two cups because it really absorbed it all. So I'll do four cups. You can 
try not to allow for any divots, like try to, because the seeds will collect in, in those divots. So just keep it relatively smooth. We'll just zero out our scale here. And now we're gonna weigh out our seeds. These are organic broccoli sprouts, broccoli seeds. Make sure it's set to ounces, and it is. And I'm gonna put one ounce. The larger seeds, when you sow them, like something like a pea or something like a, a radish, usually needs to be soaked. That's close enough, that's an ounce. And the trick here is to spread them out evenly. So you just wanna make sure that they don't bunch up in one spot. And it's not science, right? So you can, you can, they can bunch up a little bit, but you don't want them to, you don't wanna create clusters because they'll drown each other, the leaves will drown each other out when they start to collect light. See, like that was too much. And, and you don't want to bury them either. In the first phase of this, there's darkness. And then once the seeds sprout, you add light. And in the summertime, it's really easy to make um, microgreens because you could just put them outside. They need about a minimum of 12 hours of sunlight. I'm going to grow these under a solar light, a LED grow light, I should say. You just kind of generally want to space them out like this and avoid any clusters and try to get it into the corner. It makes it a little harder when the seed trays are not, it's not one continuous seed tray, but it's, it's not really the end of the world. And I'm filling in all the voids that I feel need more seeds. Now, you don't have to have a garden sprayer, that's what I'm gonna use. Um, you wanna basically get it nice and wet on top. You don't wanna drown the seed just want to get it really moist. Go back and forth, and you'll see when you've added enough. Mold seems to be the greatest deterrent when it comes to growing microgreens, and that's why I add the peroxide. When the microgreens begin to grow, they're gonna grow roots, and the roots are gonna be white, and those roots almost look like white mold, but they're not. It takes a little getting used to, to know the difference, and I haven't seen mold using this technique, so I haven't had a problem. This is a very fine mist that I'm spraying it with. Just wanna make sure that all the seeds are moistened. All right, that looks good enough to me. Now the instructions say that we just basically put this in blackout, which we're gonna do by using a, another equal, equally sized container. And we're just gonna keep this in total darkness for three days. And then after three days, we take it and we put this on like this. And as the seeds sprout up, this is gonna create weight on them and the seeds, it's gonna mimic that the seeds are under soil. After two days, after that five days, this comes off and we put it underneath our grow lights. Pretty simple. Broccoli is one of the easiest ones to grow and it takes the least amount of time. thing about microgreens is most people don't actually use it as a substitution for a salad like a arugula. I eat one of these a day in my salad. When I have microgreens in my salad, I almost feel that same perk of energy that I get from like a morning cup of coffee. It's almost like my body is like, thank you so much for giving me these. And each one of these different types of microgreens taste different. The broccoli is not, doesn't taste like broccoli. The microgreens do not taste like the vegetable that they are when they're fully mature. So here are my microgreens. This is day eight. 
They've grown nicely. You can see that some of these leaves are yellow and that's because I had the light on too strong. You gotta be careful if you're gonna be growing these underneath a grow light that you don't put way too much light. I actually burned some of these out. Other than that, it's really, really beautiful. I'm wearing gloves because I learned a little trick. If you want these to last longer in the refrigerator, it's best if you don't handle them with your bare hands. I find that when you handle them with your bare hands, they spoil a little faster. When you cut these and you put these in the refrigerator, they'll probably last about a week, maybe even 10 days. You'll see that uh, once they start to wilt, it's time for you to throw them out. What I love about these microgreens is you don't have to wash them. You could just use them right out of this tray here. If you want to get into this, the most expensive part, especially if you're going to do this in the summertime, you don't really need to worry about lighting because that is the most expensive part. But it, in the most expensive part, believe it or not, is the, is the seedling soil that you use to grow the microgreens because it comes in a really big, big, bale and it's about forty dollars one pound of this organic broccoli seed from true leaf market is sixteen dollars and forty cents if you recall we only put an ounce to this whole tray when I go and I purchase organic microgreens, they can range in price from anywhere from $1.75 an ounce to $2.50 an ounce. Good quality microgreens are closer to $2.50 an ounce. So what I want to do is harvest this and weigh it and just to get an idea of how much money this would have cost had we purchased it. I'm gonna zero out my container here. It's set to ounces. What you wanna do is grab your microgreens from the top, and this is a produce knife. You can use scissors, you don't need to use a produce knife, and just cut them. Make sure you're grabbing what you're cutting so you don't lose the microgreens. As long as you stay above the soil, you don't have to wash this. I'm gonna take this container out, make my life a little easier. We have seven and a quarter ounces of microgreens, so if you were to buy this, it could cost you anywhere from, let's say, say around $14 average, could be as much as $20. So with the one ounce of broccoli that we purchased from True Leaf Market, we've almost covered the cost of a one pound bag, which would basically give us 16 trays of microgreens. So it is definitely cost effective to do it yourself, and it's just so simple. What other expenses are there? Well, you have these initial trays. They're really not too expensive. So it really is worth it to grow yourself. Plus, you have the added benefit of choosing what flavors you want anytime you want them all year round. One of the things that people make the greatest mistake is they kind of just focus on the microgreens and forget about these trays. In order to keep these trays healthy and free from the potential growth of mold and bacteria, you need to clean them well. So once you take your microgreens and you harvest them, you dump out the soil in a, your compost bin, wherever you like, and then you wanna rinse them with soapy water, rinse them with clear water, let them dry, and then what I do is I spray them with straight 3% peroxide, and I have never had any problem with mold growing in my microgreens. As you go to the supermarket and you buy like a container of cherry tomatoes, take those clamshells rather than throw them and let them go in some kind of recycling bin for the rest of eternity, wash it, spray it with peroxide to make sure that it's sterile. Once it's dry, you can put your microgreens right in those clamshells. Another option is to take one of these Ziploc bags, put a paper towel in the bottom of the Ziploc bag, put your microgreens inside of your Ziploc bag and leave a corner of the paper towel sticking out of the bag to remind you not to close it all the way. That's an option. If you have takeout containers that are strong like the plastic round ones with the lids on them and you wanna save those, you can put your microgreens in that and you can just poke holes in the top and reuse that. That's another way of keeping it in the refrigerator where it's not exposed directly to too much of the air in the refrigerator because it's very arid and that will dry out your microgreens, but if it's completely sealed off, they'll, they'll rot. You can grow your microgreens on a mat. The mat is made up of different types of substrates. Personally, I think it's just a waste of money. It works really well in the soil. The only time where the mat would be in your best interest is let's say you live in an apartment and you don't wanna buy a large bale of seeding, seedling starter 
because if you buy them in small quantities, they get kind of pricey because of the packaging. That may be an option. There's a lot of different ways to grow microgreens. For me, this has always worked and I stick with it. Mm. Mm. Microgreens bring me joy. <laughs> Not bitter. Very mild. Broccoli is a very mild microgreen. It's not spicy like arugula. It's almost like like a butter leaf lettuce. Very basic salad here. You can make it any way you'd like. Super healthy, super nutritious. Have you ever grown microgreens? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. What's your favorite seed? I gotta tell you, I do this every week and it just basically makes my day when I have a salad that has microgreens in it as its primary lettuce instead of lettuce. It's delicious. Please, if you like this video, let me know. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share it on social media. Stay tuned, we'll be back again with more exciting things, healthy things that'll make your life better.